Today we'll continue the series on edge gilding. I'm going to follow the process presented by Peter Garrity in his 2004 Standards of Excellence video. Some of the key features are the use of PVA size, handling gold with a gilding frame, and regular brush burnishing through the edge preparation stage. I'm going to gild the head edge of a rounded and backed book. It's the book I'm binding for an upcoming series of videos. The paper is Claire Book, which is a softer machine-made paper, which I think gilds better than the hard Mohawk Superfine. In Peter's video, he gilds the book in boards. That is, the boards have been attached. I haven't laced on the boards yet, so we'll use a pair of loose boards for ploughing the head and tail and for the gilding. Once the edges are trimmed, I talc the edge that will be gilt so the pages don't stick together. I fan it out and use a brush to apply some talc and gently rub it into the edge. Once it is talced, I put it between binders boards to protect the shoulders and then place this between wedge shaped gilding boards and place this into the lying press. I'll put this fairly deep in the press with only about 10 millimeters or half an inch sticking out. You want to get everything nice and level and then do up the press tight. The really appealing thing about PVA size is how easy it is to make. One teaspoon of PVA to 200 milliliters of water. It also doesn't go off. After a few days of making a fresh batch, I do start to filter it through a fine cloth, a handkerchief, before using it. I only use EVA in the bindery these days, but went to some trouble to find some old PVA for this video. When I contacted Peter, he said he swapped to EVA some time ago. So PVA or EVA, use what you have. Just make sure it's a PVA or EVA that's designed for bookbinding, or at least for use with paper. To smooth the edge, I'm going to scrape it with a card or cabinet scraper and then sand it with fine sandpaper. There are two schools of thought at this point. Leave the edge dry or introduce some moisture and filler. In 2004, Peter put a layer of bowl on the edge before scraping it, which added some moisture and started to fill the pores in the paper. For the people that love quantities, I used about a quarter of a teaspoon of powdered bowl and three milliliters of PVA size, or as Peter says, make it thin cream thickness. I brushed the bowl on and let it just dry before using the card scraper to smooth the edge. I know another binder who does amazing gilt edges and he uses a paste wash instead of bowl, but it does the same thing. The advantage of the bowl is that you can see any scratches or imperfections very easily. I recently checked with Peter about making this video and he wanted me to stress that this was the approach back in 2004. He's gilt a lot more edges since then and his approach has evolved. Peter teaches workshops regularly at the American Bookbinding Academy where he's a director and if you want to know his current approach I'd recommend attending one of his workshops. If Peter is using a different approach now, why follow his old approach? Edge gilding was very common on books. Before the advent of foil, all gilt edges were done with gold leaf. In the trade, it was usually done by specialist edge gilders. While the process is straightforward, prepare an edge, make it smooth, apply a base such as bowl, then glue gold to the edge using a size, and finish by burnishing, the devil really is in the details. How can such a simple process be so hard to execute? If you want to do your own traditional edge gilding, I think the best approach is to try as many of the small variations as possible. The different sizes, ways of handling the leaf, burnishing sequences and methods, and from these you decide what works best for you. If you don't have good natural light, a bright light can be used to put some raking light on the edge to help look for scratches. Once I'm happy there's no scratches, I'll give it a sand with 320 grit or finer sandpaper. The scraping and sanding are always done in the direction of the edge from spine to foredge. I particularly like this next step. 
scrunch up some good quality handmade or other soft long fibred paper to make it nice and soft and straight after putting another coat of bowl on the edge burnish it with the soft paper in a circular motion at first and then finish with lengthways strokes. Then apply a final coat of bowl. You should try and avoid overworking the edge when applying the bowl and size. It is also best to have a brush that's slightly wider than the edge. But because I didn't, I had no end of trouble getting an even coat of bowl and ended up overworking the edge a bit. It doesn't need to be perfect as it will get covered in gold and the next step of brush burnishing will also even out the colour. I'll use a brush I keep just for burnishing edges covered in red bowl, just as I keep a dirty brush for cleaning up after scraping and sanding. Brush vigorously in the direction of the edge. All my brushes are horsehair shoe brushes. In the next step, I'm going to use an agate burnisher. I don't want to get anything on the edge which will stop the gold from sticking, such as wax or oils, so I'll give it a clean with lighter fluid. The smoother the edge is before applying the gold, the more solid the finished edge will look, thus burnishing the edge before applying the leaf will help produce that solid gold edge look. It's very easy at this stage to put burnish marks in the edge. You want to control the burnisher with two hands and apply only light pressure. You want to go back and forth four or five times to get a nice even finish to the edge. Now we need to get the moisture content right in the edge. So we'll apply enough coats so that the size will last maybe 10 seconds. The time it will take to lay the gold on the edge. After applying the first coat, I'll show it drying at 8 times real time to give you an idea how fast it dries without making you watch glue dry for 5 minutes. Now is a good time to start preparing the gold. One of the features of Peter's video was his use of gilders frames to handle the gold leaf. While these seem overkill when you can just use pieces of paper to handle the gold, they have some really cool features. They're made of thin strips of wood with a thin see-through piece of silk glued to them. The silk is a bit floppy until you jam a piece of wood between the arms which stretches the silk taut. Every so often these should be cleaned to avoid the build-up of grease. My favourite feature of these is that you can see the back edge of the gold leaf. Who doesn't love a toy? After watching Peter's video, I immediately made these for myself, even if they are a bit overkill. The real reason that Gilder's frames exist is so it's possible to pick up a whole leaf of gold at once. But why would you want to do that? How many books are over three inches wide? Well, not a single book, but several books stacked together. A few years ago, Peter worked at the Harcourt Bindery near Boston, which was owned by Sam Ellenport. When Sam bought Harcourt, it was essentially a functioning 19th century bindery, and they were still gilding books by hand en masse. Sam has sent me some historic photos of him gilding two huge piles of books in the early 1980s. He lowers a tower of books into what's called a gilding tub. The books are stacked spine to foredge in groups thinner than a full leaf of gold. In the third photo, where he's doing some patching, you can see the frame in his left hand. 
It's for handling full leaves of gold for doing production edge gilding that the gilder's frame was designed. I put a second coat of size on the edge and based on how fast it dries I decide the next coat will be the one for applying the gold. Now is the time to load the frames with gold. I'll take the gold out of the books in the usual manner and cut into strips a bit wider than the edge. The frames need some grease on the silk to pick up the gold so I wipe them on my hair. It's also the end of winter here and the humidity is still low so I breathe heavily on the silk to dissipate static. I didn't do this on my first attempt and ended up with a crumpled mess. Having a strip of gold left over is perfect for use in patching. In previous videos I did enough edges that I had one on video that didn't require patching. But patching is part of edge gilding and so this time I got lucky and had an edge that required patching at both the times when it's still possible. Before applying the final coat of size I'll give the edge a final brush burnish. I get everything ready and apply the final coat of size and then quickly but carefully lower the gold leaf onto the edge. The gold jumps off the silk just before it touches the edge. Unfortunately on the second piece you can see a tiny tear at the edge of the gold and as it releases from the silk this tear propagates into the gold and results in a large crescent shaped tear onto the edge. While the size is still wet I pick up a couple of short pieces of gold and breathing heavily on the edge to add a bit more moisture I place the patches over the tears. I was also ever so slightly short on one edge so I patch that too. You'll notice there was a stray piece of gold got stuck to the silk at some point. I should have paid more attention and cleaned this off because it ended up on the edge and in the final product there was a slight shadow caused by this piece of gold. How long to wait before setting the gold is still a mystery to me. Peter works while the edge is still quite wet. The person I mentioned that uses a paste wash also sets the gold while the edge is very wet. Me, when I do that, I wreck the edge. Setting the gold is using a wad of cotton to push the gold down onto the edge. You are supposed to be able to breathe on the edge and tell when it's ready by how fast the condensation disappears. I waited 30 minutes on this day. I want the edge to still be moist so I can feel moisture on the cotton wad, but not so wet that the gold comes off. I go over the edge a couple of times and then very gently burnish the edge through some paper. I use some baking paper with the silicone side facing out. Any loose gold will come off the edge at this point. This is the last chance to patch any defects.
I probably shouldn't be putting my fingers all over the edge at this point, as oil off my fingers may interfere with patching. There are a few small defects that I want to patch. The edge is too dry to just place gold on the defects, so I'll use a fine brush to paint the defects with size. And then using a wad of cotton, I'll pick up some gold and place it on the defects, just like placing gold on leather when finishing. I'll leave these for 10 minutes and then set them with the cotton wad and burnish over them again through paper. Now we're into the final straight. I'll indirectly rub beeswax on the edge and start burnishing. I'll go back and forth a few times and then add more beeswax and I'll do this three or four times. Once further burnishing is making no noticeable difference, the edge is complete. Take the book out and hinge off the boards to try and avoid tearing the gold off the pages and tap the book on the press, being careful of the shoulders. If you have good karma, the pages will come apart and gold will stay on the edge. It's a simple process, but it can be incredibly frustrating. Like many things, confidence is a key ingredient Confidence comes from experimenting, finding the method that works for you, and doing enough edges that you have enough success that you feel like you know what you're doing. I hadn't gilt an edge for months when I decided to do this video. I did three practices that all went great, and then I turned on the camera and had a complete disaster, which I ploughed off and did again. Being methodical is key. Distraction and rushing will lead to failures. I'd like to thank Peter and Sam for generously sharing their knowledge and experience. As always, I really appreciate you hitting the like button. If you're able and want to, you can support the making of more videos like this through Patreon or with a one-off contribution, and the details are in the description below. To find videos I've made on specific topics or other projects, the best place to go is the DAS Bookbinding Video Guide. It's the index to the channel. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button and select the notification bell. Until next time, cheerio!